Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And today's episode, we're talking about Dewalt Miner Saws. Now, Dewalt has been making Miner Saws for a long time and they are not new to making Miner Saws and they are not new to making battery powered cordless Miner Saws, okay? So in today's episode, we're talking about Dewalt Miner Saws, but more specifically, we're talking about this beauty right here, which is the second generation of the 12 inch dual bevel sliding compound Miner Saw on the Flexvolt lineup, all right? So we're gonna go over this saw top to bottom, see how it stands up against other Miner Saws we may have seen so far on this channel. You don't wanna miss this, stick with us. This right here is a DeWalt DCS 781, and it is the second generation of their 12 inch dual bevel sliding compound miner saw on their FlexVolt lineup, all right? So uh, a couple years ago when DeWalt released the FlexVolt system, they released a 12 inch dual bevel sliding compound miner saw that took two FlexVolt batteries. And a lot of people refer to that saw as the OG, mainly because it was really powerful. It had some really neat features, like you, you could plug it in with the transformer and stuff like that into a wall, use it corded. It had really good capacity and it had really good performance, obviously with two flex volt batteries, right? So with the newer generation, the refresh, this one, they now have made three major changes and some other improvements. And if you don't wanna watch the entire video, I'm gonna tell you those three changes right now. First change, it uses only one battery. Second change, it has some interesting technology where it captures some of the uh, regen energy and puts it back into the battery. And the third thing, it's really good at capturing dust. They claim up to 94% dust capture uh, performance with the right dust extraction system that they have. So if you, all you care about is that, you don't have to watch the rest of it. Otherwise, let's go look at the marketing hype and then we'll bring you in closer and take a better look at it. This right here is a 60 volt max lithium ion 12 inch dual bevel sliding compound miner saw from DeWalt. It allows the user to tackle demanding woodworking applications with the 60 volt max technology. It features the cut capture charge technology, which is regenerative braking technology to extend runtime with every cut. It allows the user to make up to 675 cuts in three and a quarter inch MDF base molding or 255 cuts in pressure treated four by four lumber. It is all done on the DCB609 battery, which is pretty much a nine amp hour flex volt battery, AKA three amp hour battery uh, as used as a flex volt tool. This miner saw features efficient bevel gear transmission and has the ability to capture up to 94% of dust. The cut line blade positioning system allows you to see an accurate cut line indication. It also features updated controls uh, compared to DeWalt's previous designs and the tool weighs 50.9 pounds, which allows you to carry it easily across demanding job sites. This is a single battery tool. Um, it has a uh, dual fitting dust port, which allows you to work with one and seven eighth of an inch and two and a half inch wet dry vacs. Also, the adapter is included. It has maximum cut capacity, which up to six and a quarter inch base molding vertically, six and a half inch crown molding nested, 12 and three sixteenths inch wide lumber. It's ease of use and it features a three year limited warranty, one year service and 90 day money back guarantee. All right, so obviously this is a left hand part of the tool and it looks almost exactly like a DeWalt miter saw because it is a DeWalt miter saw and DeWalt's been making miter saws for a long time and this is generally how DeWalt miter saws look and work, all right? So uh, this is obviously the blade guard here is plastic but it is uh, secured to this metal mechanism here that kind of slides in out. This is, this is adjustable as you know, most DeWalt miter saws are. Uh, this right here is a 60 tooth uh, ATB blade that comes with the miter saw. It, I believe it's a thin curved blade and it generally works pretty well. You know, it's a DeWalt miter saw blade and it works exactly as a DeWalt miter saw blade would work. Uh, if you use them for a while, it's, you're gonna feel right at home. Uh, this right here is obviously the dust port mechanism. Um, it has the DeWalt twist lock uh, secure mechanism type thing. Uh, if you have the FlexVolt uh, dust extractor and, and the dust extractor from DeWalt, it pretty much works with that system. But if you don't have it with that system, uh, they, you can also fit, you know, obviously, uh, the one I use is a dust right uh, from Rockler. Uh, that one fits on here, but it does include uh, this, which actually fits on here, right? And then you can connect uh, pretty a few different sizes of hoses, right? So you can connect your standard two-inch hose here. You connect another hose that goes around it in case you know, 
there was one, I haven't seen one. Uh, you can also connect the hose that goes on the outer ring of this and one on the inner ring. So it works with uh, multiple different uh, dust collection uh, hose sizes, which is infinitely better than the Makita one, I would say, mainly because Makita one, I don't know what's going on with them, but they don't give you adapters and they make all their dust port mechanisms or sizes all different. So it's like, you gotta figure out when the world's going on. DeWalt seems to kind of play that game, but they kind of give you a way to work around it. So it's great that they include this and this works really well, okay? Um, if you did use the dust bag, uh, the dust collection does work into the dust bag. Uh, generally, well, I would say better than most miner saws, but you know, it's nothing compared to a, uh, uh, a, a dust extractor hooked up to it, okay? And when a dust bag gets, I would say maybe closer to halfway full and you're making cuts, it's just gonna start falling out. So you're gonna see that. Uh, but the point is that, you know, uh, this right here, the, the dust that's on, on here is from making, I wanna say, or was it like maybe eight window boxes, I wanna say, um, from here with the uh, dust connection system on here. So, you know, they've got some of that stuff going on. Anyways, uh, moving on, uh, let's get this thing out the way. So you can lock it in this down position if you wanted to. And the way you unlock it is the same type of uh, mechanism they have on the Makita saws, uh, which is this right here. And I'm glad that, you know, uh, DeWalt makes this mainly because uh, I really don't like the ones where you have to pull out, you move it up and then you have to press it in and it's like, okay, come on guys, let's spend like, you know, two extra dollars and then give people something better. So it's nice that they put this in on here um, and it works, you know, pretty well, okay? Uh, so that's how you would get it out of that lock position. This right here is your trenching mechanism. Um, so, you know, you could set your depth here, right? And you can lock in uh, that depth by adjusting this wing uh, nut here. So that way it doesn't move here, making it a lot. If you don't know what that means, it's pretty much like a poor man's dado that you can make with this miter saw. Uh, I don't use it that much, but you know, it does work uh, generally pretty well, okay? So uh, you obviously see, you know, it says Dwalt 60 volt max brushless, and this is a single battery uh, flex volt miter saw. So the original OG, uh, which is the, you know, the 100, 20 volt one, which kind of came with the adapter and used two flex foot batteries. That thing is a beast. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, that's a great saw, but this saw is even better with one battery. All right, so let's talk about this dust port mechanism here, all right? And I would go, go ahead and say, this is probably the best factory dust port shoot flapper, let's just say, uh, that I've seen on a miter saw and it, and it really works uh, pretty well, okay? Uh, there's some caveats, but. Uh, so as you can see here, it's pretty thick, but it's not this thick, it's only this outer rim that is pretty thick, right? The inner material is, is thick, don't get me wrong, it's thicker than most miter saw uh, flapper, but uh, it's nowhere nearly as thick as you know this outer rim makes it look like and it is pretty much one big piece but in three separate parts okay uh, so first of all uh, it comes out like this way right so it's cut back here and then there's another part that covers the uh, gap right here um, so when you're using it, it redirects, you know, all the dust it can pretty much capture here, up here, and then there's this other half, right? So it's really one big piece and three separate parts, and it works really well. If you're per pretty much cutting, you know, two by lumber, it's working pretty well. Uh, if you're cutting four by lumber, it yeah, doesn't work as well, but you know, it works pretty well. But the reason they kind of made it into like three separate parts is because if you're cutting something against the fence, watch this, you'll see. Um, instead of ripping it, right, instead of a uh, blade guard getting ripped or torn or stretched, it actually just moves really easily across this fence, okay? So that's a pretty good thing. So as we're also talking about uh, uh, cutting thicker material, so obviously, you know, the arbor is here. So when you're cutting a thick material, this is going to be pretty much like here, okay? Um, so the flapper will be up here and then the dust will not be collected very well, right? Mainly because, um, you know, depending on how you're making the cut, a lot of dust will just be kicked up behind it and, you know, just goes all up behind the saw. But, you know, uh, that's just for thicker material, like full depth cuts, but, you, you know, on smaller material, it works really well, okay? Um, so while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about the fence. So this fence obviously has to be removed with uh, bevels, okay? Uh, that's pretty standard. That's, that's no secret or, you know, anything like that in a minor saw. But with this fence, you can actually move it out easily. So there's a wing bolt back there. And if you undo the wing bolt, you can lift it up pretty quick. Um, and it works pretty well. You can also slide it out if you're just used to sliding it out. Um, but that does work, okay? And it is, you know, right now the wing bolt is, you know, pretty much loosened uh, almost all the way. And it is 
a little bit flappy, but you know, it's not too bad. All right, so this right here is obviously your uh, miter gauge and it's got your pretty standard detents, right? So starting here at zero, it's got zero, then it's got 15, 22.5, 31.6, 45, and then it'll go all the way to 50, okay? And if you go back to zero, it'll also go ex the opposite way with exactly the same detent. So it's got zero, uh, 15, uh, 22.5. You see right there, I skipped something real quick, 31.6, and we'll talk about that in a bit. And it'll go to 45, and then it'll go all the way to uh, 60 that way, if you did. So um, just to show you to skip again, so the way that this works, we'll look at the bottom, is that there's like a little metal plate that kind of gets pressed down into these detents. So if you're moving fast, let's say like this, I have it right here, and I'm just pressing it this way, you can easily just, you know, skip over the detents or hop over, okay? Um, so that's a little bit of a concern because, you know, if you're one of those people who, you know, don't take care of miter saw and just, you know, rolling around really fast, that's just gonna wear out. You know, that pretty much happens similar to the Makita uh, miter saws with the ones with the aluminum plates, even though theirs works a little bit differently, um, those will wear out. So I can imagine this wearing out over time if you're just abusing it like that, right? So just don't do that, okay? And you'll be fine. Uh, the other thing to note on here is if you want to go in any middle position that is not a positive detent, obviously you just put it here and you can lock this handle down. This handle is plastic, uh, but you know, uh, you know, dual has been making this thing for a while and it's, it's held up pretty well. Not this particular saw, but you know, this mechanism. Um, so we'll go ahead and look at the bottom and you'll kind of figure out, you know, if that's going to be a problem for you or not. Uh, first of all, in order to start the miter, you have to unlock the lock that's back here. Uh, mainly because, you know, that's mostly how most of what miter saws seem to work. They haven't changed that for a long time. And you can easily bevel to the left, uh, easily automatically, right? Cause there's no lock for that. And if you do that right there, you will get your first stop, which is 22.5, okay? And then if you move this bevel pole out the way, you'll get to, I think it was like 34.9 or something like that. Um, and then uh, you can take this out and you could go all the way to 45, okay? Uh, and this bevel is almost, uh, it's micro adjustable by this little bolt here in case you need to fine tune it to get perfect bevels, but uh, it's got these bevel paw systems uh, here that works uh, pretty well, okay? So watch carefully here, and you'll see, you know, if you just bevel here, it little pops up a little bit. So um, it's just, you know, I'm just pointing out micro things. So if that bothers you, it's gonna bother you, but if it doesn't bother you, you'll be fine, okay? It's got the exact same things on the other side, but if you wanna bevel to the right, you do have to reach back here and unlock uh, the same type of mechanism that's here. Uh, this mechanism pretty much back there and it will let you bevel to the right. And it's got the same positive uh, bevel stops there, uh, the way that that works. But if you unlock pretty much the back and you move the bevel paws out the way, you're able to bevel pretty much freely. But when you dial it in exactly wherever it is that you want, then you have to go back here and you have to lock it. And then if you're like me, you got to remember, you know, righty tidy, lefty loosey, and then you'll figure out, you know, the way to lock it in. So, you know, there is that, all right? So this right here is a mechanism I was talking to you about earlier. You know, and in case um, you, you wanted to get it all the way back out, right? You have to unlock this, right? Then bevel all the way up, right? And then it'll pop back in and you can go back and then that will bring you back to zero. And as you can see, uh, you know, it's like with most miter saws, you see right here, there's like this caked on dust that's collected here. You know, there's that. Uh, this part right here is where you would lock uh, it into a chop saw mechanism. Um, in case you wanted to do that. And for some reason, I can't remember righty tighty lefty loosey right now. And right here is where you would put uh, the little wrench that they include. I've obviously taken it off of here because I know I'm gonna lose it. Uh, actually, I probably already lost it, but you know, it's this little Torx little wrench thing that kind of fits into uh, these uh, nuts to just make whatever adjustments you need to do. So it does fit in right here. All right, so let's talk about this uh, little screw back here. And what the purpose of this screw is, there's a little wire bracket that comes out or that you can get and you put in here and it comes out this way and then goes in on the other side and fits in right there, right? So what that really does is it really extends the base of this miter saw. So when the weight is back here, it doesn't actually, you know, push it back this way. It kind of helps uh, the uh, leveling pretty much of the miter saw so it, you know, has, it's pretty stable. That way it doesn't just, you know, flop around easily. But if you're using it on a miter saw stand like I am, you probably don't need that. All right, so now let's talk about this little metal strip here, okay? And I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's a little ingenious on what they did with that small little metal strip. But I feel like they could have done something better, especially, you know, considering the caliber of the saw. And, you know, when they got stuff like this on here, which is pretty solid, really good, 
uh, feels really secure. It's got, you know, pretty good tolerances and, you know, it's, it's a pretty good system. And then they got a little, this little piece of metal strip on here, you know, so I'm not a huge fan of this, but it does work. Okay. And the purpose of this is, um, if you can take it out and there's a little ramp on here, you know, so this pr part of the metal is pressed in. And if you want to, you know, put it secure there, you just press it in, it stays there. But if you want to take it out, you got to pull it out. Okay. Uh, but the purpose of this is if you want to put this saw in chop saw position, you take this saw to where it goes up here and then you got to press it down. And now the saw is in the chop saw position. And as you can see, you know, as it is with most minor saws and being in chop position, there's a little, little bit of wiggle room. You can kind of make that a little bit better by tightening this uh, knob down and it doesn't wiggle as much, but that's the purpose of that. And, um, Let's just say here, let's show you the chop saw position. Just put that there, press this down, it goes into chop saw mode, and that's pretty much how that works, right? So now let's get, or actually let's keep it in that position. Let's take this bar out. And if you wanna to go to travel position, right? So you would go to, uh, you know, you would just swing the miter saw, and then it would go here, right? And now you're in travel position. Uh, so that's how that really works. You know, obviously, even if you're in travel position, you want to lock this down, uh, mainly because, you know, if you're traveling with it, you hit a bumpy road, this is going to pop right off, right? So uh, this is really more of the secure mechanism to it. And this is kind of here, it's like a safety, if you want to call it. Um, but, you know, you can't swing it all the way around either. It kind of gets stuck right there, right? See, so right there. So it's kind of, you have to go round it this way and then put it back there in case that's what you wanted. And it's a little bit janky mainly because you can't swing past this, this thing. So if you want to swing past it, you know, you either just move the minor saw out the way or you just have to like pull this up, right? So I'm not sure how long or how well this is going to hold up in the long run considering it's just held in here with a little piece of screw and it's, you know, piece of metal. Don't get me wrong. It's not like sheet metal thin, but you know, it's not a huge chunk piece of metal either. So that's really what this is. Um, and it works okay so far, but you know, only time will tell, right? Uh, so this handle is, you know, pretty secure handle. There is one on the other side. Uh, it really fits in to the base of the miter saw and then you really secure it down with this uh, screw uh, bolt here. And it is exactly on the other side. You know, you can carry it that way, but it always feels better to, you know, secure, carry something with uh, your hand right there. And as you can see, I don't know if you can come out that well on video, but you know, there is a little hand icon that says carry it right there. But you know, this uh, little extra piece of, uh, let's call it a holding block here, uh, seems to make it better. So, you know, that's always there. All right, so obviously this is a left-hand part of the tool and this right here is a motor. That right there is a blade and uh, motor is right here. Uh, and it works generally pretty well. It doesn't have all of these like arms and all those unnecessary pieces of plastic and stuff that, you know, they've had on other uh, Dewalt miner saws. But this here seems really much more compact than what it was previously. Obviously it's got all the uh, uh, miter stuff here or the miter gauge here and be careful of this because, you know, uh, we somebody did cut themselves on this. Uh, no names will be had, uh, but you know, uh, there is that, you know, obviously with the other side of the tool, you know, it's got pretty much exactly the same side as the left side, but just wanted to show you this side of the tool. All right. So this right here is obviously a top uh, D handle here. It's got a little safety here. And then in order to pull this trigger, you got to pull the safety, then you can pull the trigger. This right here is for the LED light for the uh, Blade Shadow Cast LED uh, cut line system. This part right here is a big handle. You know, it's also big uh, carry handle for that and it would work really well, okay? And obviously this D handle being on this right hand part of saw, it's not a huge favorite, you know, for left-handed folks. So, you know, there is that, all right? Let's see if we can go ahead and pull up the shadow line system for you guys. Uh, let's drop a battery in here. Let's get this out. Uh, let's get a piece of uh, five and a half inch, or let's just say six inch trim. So the LED shadow light, right? Let's just turn it on right now by pressing this button. You'll see, um, this is pretty much what it looks like, okay? Um, in order to actually see what the cut line looks like, you're going to have to pull it down you know, your, your, uh, here, let me move this. You're going to have to pull down, um, the saw a little bit to kind of see what that looks like. Right. So you see right there, it works pretty well once you pull that down, but you can't really use it, even though you kind of can, uh, with, uh, 
with the with the blade guard up right you can kind of see there's a little line right here you know it's, it's it's a guess but in order to really get it you really got to pull it down then you can really look at it okay uh so you know it doesn't work very well outside in you no know, super bright sunlight but you know if you're under some type of tent system or shade system working in the shade it'll work pretty well and it's better than uh not having it okay some people prefer lasers some people don't i really don't care as much for either way because no matter what i'm bringing this saw down right so let's go ahead and show you that right i'm bringing this saw down here to see what the cut line is going to look like anyways so the blades are already right here i'm already going to know exactly what it is but i guess for most people it's a huge upgrade versus some of the other ones uh the part where it really helps the most if if you're going to do like a compound miter um, and you really want to see exactly where the blade uh, cut cut line comes out to before the blade comes close or a little bit further out that does help so you know it's nice that they really do have this because you know in a way there's no adjustments like you would need in a laser even though you know there's a laser on you know so let's say call it more expensive tools that have a laser on the left and right that tell you exactly where the blade's going to go and that's pretty much what you want to do right but with this there is no doubt that that's exactly where the blade is and you don't have to have a laser on each side so you know uh, the blade uh, shadow light system is good you know if you're going to ask me which one would I prefer I'd probably prefer this one uh, sometimes I may lean towards a, uh, a laser if I'm working outside or something like that but you know there's that all right so let's go take a look at some of the accuracy of this tool since i know inevitably somebody's going to ask so let's go ahead and get our stabila tech 700 out here this saw right now is in the chop saw position meaning the uh miter arm is not all the way out let's put the uh angle finder right here against the blade we'll move this against the fence we'll make sure that it's absolutely squared away uh, on this tool meaning we'll put it up against the blade put this out make sure there's no gap right here and then we'll move it away from the blade so that it's not flexing out again and then put it back against the blade with no flex and if we look at it we are at 90 degrees perfect on the dot okay what happens when we move this miter saw arm all the way out you know let's find out so moving this miter saw arm all the way out let's get rid of this uh flap here let's reset this back you don't really don't have to do that but i did want to make sure it doesn't stay at 90 so let's put this right up here against the blade move this arm all the way out against this fence let's make sure that we are not flexing the blade so put pressure downwards here as it's right up here parallel to the blade push this arm out see there's no uh no gap there no gap there move this back a little bit put it back right no gap here let's go take a look we are at 89.9 degrees so that's pretty squared away i mean it's literally fluctuating between 89 and 90 okay so that right there is pretty good i know somebody's going to ask what happens against this fence up here you know i'm not entirely sure so let's go find out so let's move this up a little bit here um the minor saw is uh arm is still all the way out let's go ahead put it right here higher part of the blade and let's miter, uh, stretch this arm square the way right there. Put it up against this corner tight right here, tight. And against that part of the fence, we are at 89.9 or 8, depending on, you know, how, how badly it moves. So it's pretty squared away uh, to the bottom part of this fence here and here. Uh, if you move it into chop saw position, you know, does that change? I don't really know. Let's go find out, right? So put this here. I can't really hold this part out let me get rid of this and we can take a better look at it so put this right here against this part of the blade bring this all the way out top part up here see what do you get we are getting exactly 90 degrees all right so now let's go take a look at some of the bevel angles okay so let's take this digital angle finder here let's turn it on and be careful when you see other people do this because make sure they are squaring away or, or basing off of the uh, base right so you want to zero out at the base because the stand the miter whatever ground may not be level as you can see in my case this is not so let's go ahead and zero this out we'll settle this out at zero Tilt the zero out and now it's zeroed out. So everything is going to be measured off of this angle. Okay. So let's make sure that this is locked in. Put it here. Right now we're at zero. Okay. We brought this here. Come on. Get back to zero. There we go. Let's go ahead and see where we are at with this blade right here. 
Um, as you can see right here, we are at about 89.9. Let's see if that changes at all as we pull the miter arm out. So uh, the miter arm is out, not sure you can see it right there, but it's about 89.8. So uh, assuming, you know, the, we're trusting in the accuracy rating of this Klein uh, digital angle find, uh, bevel finder, but you know, we can go ahead and look at what the accuracy rating of that is. As the miter saw arm goes back in, now we're still at 89.9, we're back to 89.9, so it's really good there, okay? Let me go ahead and unlock this bevel position here. Let's let it bevel. Uh, we'll put the first bevel paw out, which should be about 22.5. So if we go here, get it right there at 22.5, we are getting right now 67.5. And 67.5 is exactly what we should get, mainly because 90 degrees minus 22.5 is 67.5, okay? So let's go move on to the next uh, bevel paw here. Let's, actually, let's see if that changes as it comes out. The miter uh, arm is all the way out, and now we're at 67.4. So, you know, it's fairly close, not too bad. And it's fluctuating between 0.5 and 0.4. We're going to take that as, you know, it's at 0.5, okay? Let's bring this arm all the way back out. Let's put this second bevel paw out. Uh, that right there. Now we are at 56.6. Let's see if that changes as it bring, comes out this way. As it comes out this way, we are still 56.6, 56.5. So, you know, there's literally a hair a difference, but now it's zeroed back out to 56.5, okay? Let's bring it back in. Let's pull this up. And then let's go to a 45 by moving all the bevel paws. See what happens. Here we go. 45. Um, as you can see right here, we are at 45 perfectly okay let me pull this arm all the way out you're not going to see it very well from this angle but we are still at 45 right here on the money okay so let's go see how that changes as the head comes up okay so as the head comes up i'm gonna have to reposition this um so at, at an angle that y'all can actually see it on camera put this here uh, as you can see right here, you're not going to see it very well, but we're at about 44.9. If you can't see, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Let me slide the arm back in. Right? Now we're exactly at 45 degrees, all right? So that's actually really good because if I bring this head down, right? Let me bring this head down. forty four point nine so that's actually really good there's very little fluctuation between uh, head being all the way down head being all the way up as you would imagine it's a pretty stiff head it's still you know fairly new hasn't had a ton of use but you know dewalt minor saws usually hold up to you know pretty good use so forty four point nine that's actually really good. All right, so usually at this part of the video, we'll throw a bunch of cutting footage and testing and performance and stuff like that. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all the cutting footage is gonna be at the end of the video towards the closing scene. So if you wanna go and check that out, check that out. Right now, let's talk about what it can cut uh, up against the fence because that's what people really wanna know. So this right here is a uh, pine two by eight and it cannot cut this up against the fence, okay? You can kind of get away with cutting it up against the fence by doing some kind of tipping motion and, and tinkering with it. But I'm gonna tell you right now, you know, that's dangerous, don't do that. Um, I just went ahead and, and, and you can get away with it if you did two in a pinch, but if you're gonna cut something like this, just do that, okay? Uh, cut it this way and you'll be fine. It is sliding, you know, that's probably one of the main purposes of a sliding compound miter saw, right? So if you do try to cut it up against the fence, you know, straight down, uh, it'll leave roughly about that much, right? But like I said, tipping and all this fun action, you can get away with it, but don't do that, all right? So. Uh, specs wise up against the fence it will cut about six and a half inches that appears to be accurate we did measure it and it, it will do that this part uh, will it, it doesn't look like it can do that because this middle piece right here but as the material uh, cuts uh, this material closes down you'll see that this actually moves up and allows you to get that increased cut capacity right here okay so that's usually how that works all right so um, 
Let me go ahead and explain some of the dust collection uh, things that we're going to do uh, and you'll see all those clips at the end and I'll go ahead and tell you right now uh, the way we're filming it, it I'm standing at a weird angle so it's really hard to stand stable there mainly because there's a camera legs or two camera legs like in the way uh, in order to get that footage and I realized we didn't <laughs> necessarily put it at the best angle. So uh, what's generally happening at the end is we're making about 30 cuts. We're making 10 cuts in 2x4 then we're making 10 cuts in uh, uh, base molding, uh, uh, two by, uh, six inch base molding, uh, MDF base molding, and then we're making 10 cuts in two by eight at a 45 degree uh, bevel, mainly because that's that's a pretty hard cut for a miter saw, most everybody knows that. So uh, that's what's really doing, and you will see, uh, the ones that have the good angle, uh, how the dust collection really works, and then what we're actually measuring is we'll tr try to brush most of it off, and we have a box at the bottom, and then we collect, us all the dust that wasn't collected in the cup and then we tried to measure it, okay? All right, so what can we say about this tool? Let's go ahead and close the video out. First of all, we did purchase this tool with our own money. So nobody sent it to us, it's not sponsored. We did buy this, we had for a couple weeks and we've used it and that's our own and opinion. So make sure you take that into account. Second of all, this tool is made in Taiwan. For some reason, everyone's always asking where these tools made. I'm gonna tell you this one right now. It has a sticker right here that says, made in Taiwan. It doesn't even say if global materials in part, it just says made in Taiwan, okay? Third of all, uh, the question of, would I go out and buy this tool again? The question is, yes. Uh, we did purchase this tool, and like I said, we would buy it again if we're looking for this type of design, okay? So the way I look at minor saws, there's really three different styles, let's say. Not talking about blade size, but three different styles. Uh, they got the traditional rail type system where the head kind of moves across rails like this, right? With the rail, the, the rails embedded with the head, right? Uh, and then there are the lesser common ones, the forward rail system, like the Makita and the Fest tools. And then the third one, which is, you know, I would say even less common, uh, which is like the glide, the Bosch glide or the Delta Cruiser type miter saws. You could throw the rigid one in there, but that's really just made by Delta, you know, or whoever makes that. So uh, there's really those three types. So uh, if I was looking for a traditional type where the uh, rail slides in and out, um, yeah, this is definitely gonna be the one I would get. So while we go ahead and say that, let's go ahead and talk about just key components, right? This is probably the real thing you really need to take away from this video. Uh, one, this thing has a blade RPM speed of about 3,800. Nobody really cares about that, but it's a 12 inch blade. It's got these upgraded knobs here. It does have a trenching mechanism. It's got a D-handle, it's got the safety. It's got the uh, LED shadow light system with a button to activate it. Miter's 50 degrees one angle and 60 degrees the uh, other angle. Bed was up to 49 degrees and negative one degrees in both directions. It's got positive bevel pause, right? It has a really good dust uh, cap, uh, capture capacity of about 94%. It's fairly light um, and it uses a single flexible battery. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, uh, it, it's got that regenerative braking system. I don't know, I'm not gonna do a full video test of you know how many cuts can it really make and stuff like that. Uh, there's tons of videos, there, or there will be tons of videos on people doing that, but I genuinely do not find those to be uh, too helpful mainly because you know not a ton of people are going to be doing that and all of that is going to be 100% variable depending on what kind of material people are cutting and nobody says they're cutting the same material you know let's just say 300 times uh, that's not true people are building like these decks in the swamps maybe doing that but uh, this is not that useful let's just say okay uh, the thing I can go ahead and say is you know people that have this saw or buying these cordless tools are going to have more known battery anyways okay uh, but the thing I really want to tell you about the blade regen system is uh, you'll know, you feel that when the regen aggressive braking kicks in. It's kind of like if you've driven a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf or some type of electric vehicle and you can put it on aggressive regen braking mode or something like that, right? As soon as you let off the go pedal, can't call it gas anymore, um, you feel that the car has this uh, resistive automatic braking that's just like heavily applied, right? Uh, that's the feel that you get with this saw when, when you let go of the uh, power or the trigger. So uh, that's the feel that you get and it's nice to know that it is working because you can kind of feel that it's working. I'm sure we could draw up some science to figure out how much power and stuff is getting that, but I don't think that's gonna be too useful to most people. So uh, just know that, you know, you feel that it's coming in. It doesn't really bother me and it probably shouldn't bother you, but you'll feel that difference right away when you use this saw versus some any other saw, right? So uh, that's all we can really say about this tool. You know, hope this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions or anything like that, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.